What up everyone? This is Casual Chris with another tutorial. And this tutorial will be on Navicord actually. I couldn't find a legit tutorial on Navicord, so I'm going to show you how to use this thing. This is my tutorial on Navicord. This over here in your top right corner is your settings button. Settings button is important because that's where you'll find your scale. Your scale is what makes this thing awesome. Um, for me personally, I have an emotion wheel. Check out my uh, tutorial on how I make music um, for that. Uh, but this scale right here is an important step when you hit that scale, now you get into all this. If you don't know what any of this means, I, I really advise you to take a music theory class. Um, I took one in college, didn't learn nothing. Nah, I mean, shout out to my music teacher. He actually made me, you know, pursue music, but I didn't learn anything about music theory. It could have just been me not focused. Um, but I really learned it in a 10 minute YouTube video. So, you know, there's that. <laughs> you can, you can learn music theory in, in 10 minutes. You know, you'll have a, a good, again, a 20, all you need to know is 20% of music theory and 80% of it will be what you use. So just use that. That's what the law I use, use that law. But anyways, these are your scales. They are important. You need to know what these do. If you do know what these do, then all you do is pick your scale. Let's say I want a minor scale. Click minor. Now you're on minor. Uh, now you go up here to root. That's your key note. That's, you know, it's your main note. Again, music theory. If you have no idea what that is, music theory, music theory, music theory. Ten minutes. Take the time. Um, anyways, so now you pick your note that you want, your root note. Say I want G minor, which I love G minor. That is a dancey, <laughs> that is some dance music to me. So you got your G minor. Pulls up, changes the entire look of this, you know. So Everything else you don't need. You can link it to Ableton. You know, I don't do that. I I just uh, you can link it to Beatmaker Three. Um, again, I don't do that. What it allows you to do is it allows you to you know press only these notes on your Beatmaker or whatever audio app you're using. So technically you'll never hit a note that's at a scale. Everything will sound good. Um, I don't use that again. I will always go to, I would rather, you could do that in Beatmaker 3. You could do the same thing in Beatmaker 3. So it's, it's really not that necessary. What I use this for is to find chords. Chords are your base of your song. Um, you know, there's only so many chords. You know, so you're not reinventing the wheel here. Um, all you're doing is taking your finger now and just moving it. Just moving it all along. And as long as you do that, every, every chord that you hit will be how it should be. It, how it should flow. So it's going to sound good, basically. It's gonna sound good. If you're a beginner, it's gonna sound good. So no matter what you do, this is gonna sound good. Now the next thing you need to pay attention to is what's happening up here every time your finger moves. So say I found that this, this, this sounds good. Say that sounds good to me. This answer terrible man terrible but say that sounds good so 
So say that sounds good and that's what you want to do. Um, notice what's happening up here. E flat, G minor, B flat. Okay, so that's basically telling you that that's the scale at which you're playing. It confirms it with your keys down here. Or, So it's showing you what notes it's hitting in order to get that chord progression. So that's a three note chord progression. Now in my head lies a metronome. If you don't have a metronome that's counting out your song for you, here's one right here. Two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So that's your metronome right there. If you need something to count out, you know, if you need something to hold notes to, um, but that is what you're looking at. So it's, it's that fast. Um, also, what you can do is you can use two fingers and that's going to give you more of a lush chord progression. Um, it's going to add four notes to the chord, to your chord progression. So with this, you really have to get the right position of your fingers. And, the, and there you go, you got a chord progression, you got a song. Um, if you heard it like I heard it, hey man, the, you understand how powerful this tool is. Um, so now that you have something that you want, you know, you have something that you want, you like, here's where this comes in handy. And, and here's where, you know, there's just a little bit too much on this, but here it is. I get why they did it, but it's, there's a little bit too much. So this button right here, you click there. This screen's going to pop up. This is an important screen. So we're going to grab what we want. And when I say grab, I mean you hold the you hold it down, you let go, you don't touch nothing, you get your chord progression of what it is right up here. It's a G minor seven. You hit that plus sign. It's gonna pop up that screen that we pulled up and you touch, think of this as a drum pad now. This is a drum pad. Did it, I think this clicked for you, right? It should have clicked right now. Boom, that's your drum pad. So. In order to re-access that drum pad, you hit this button right there, and now all of a sudden, instead of having to hold four keys down at the same time like you would on a piano, you're only holding one. Instead of having to find it on a piano, you're only you, you're pressing it on a drum pad. This is powerful stuff. So now that you have that, now we're going to our next um you know our next thing i, I forgot where i was right here boof so now it's b flat again hit that plus sign it pops up boom now you got b flat and that sounds good you could just hold those two notes all day um and and there you go you you got it all figured out now the next thing that this this does that that just you know I, I I don't think you need this is this button here. I don't think you need this. It's to move things around once you have say you have this all filled up. Um, you know, you can move it around, but in all honesty, I don't I don't ever fill this whole thing up with all kinds of chord progressions. You could if you're if you're just lost and you're looking for something but for the most part i find everything in this screen i find i find i find it in this
that's fire, you know what I'm saying? And it's really fast once you know, once you're just, you're just hitting here, finding something, clicking there, finding something, popping it. And once you have your entire chord progression, I might have to finish this song. Yeah, I might have to like do that. I, I yeah, that, that's a fire song. So once you have that set up, um, there's still some more screens, but again, I just can't see the way you would need these. Uh, this is a copy button. If you needed to add more sections or you wanted to get really intricate with this, you could do that waste of your time in my opinion um this move button if you want you know if you found a different chord progression that sounded better and you just want it to look you know in order use that you know i, I could see that okay um this is going to change your key but i wouldn't i wouldn't really worry about all any of that so there it is that is basically all you need to know about this i'm going to go further into it though um, about what you can do once you have your chord progression. So say this is my chord progression here. Um, what makes this cool is you have, in this screen here, you have the ability to completely change the chord at which you hit. Um, this is powerful stuff, man. So now you're going from like a basic chord structure to complex complexity where you're not necessarily have to know this as a you're not a master pianist you know what i'm saying or a, or a music theory guru you know you are just literally manipulating boxes until you find something that sounds good so for me this is how i find my bass lines like say for an example, so if you see here, this says the third, the third, the third, the third. It's all playing on the third octave, right? So what happens, and this is what it sounds like. So say, you know, I was like, hey, I want to put my bass as F. I want this at I want this to be the lowest note in that chord progression instead of how it was. Look at how it sounds. See how it just changed? Sounds good, right? You could test these, you could test different ones out as well. So say I wanted to test A. Sounds good too. Or if I want to keep it like B, if I want to keep the root note the same, or the bass the same as the, the root, that's how it's going to sound. So that's basic. So you can leave it and sound, you know, and sound like every musician who's ever made music or you can, you know, throw a little spice on it and and move the D. So this is gonna this is gonna show you what it sounds like before, um, you know, before anything. This this is how you trick people into thinking you're playing wrong keys because you're you're changing, you know, the chord progression. So this stuff is powerful stuff. This goes from you know, normal, you know, everyday music to like, whoa. Or I like the A. Like the bass note is your highest note. And so you can also just change the whole entire thing so that it's just a B minor uh, or major nine, you know. Just be all over the place.
So you can play really beautiful. Um, you can make something just amazingly beautiful from, you know, from a, from a poppy, like a, a big poppy song, like how it was. How it was before. I, I don't even remember how it was before. So I guess, um, I guess one way the copy would seem work is if, you know, I wanted to see how it sounded in it in a lower octave and not have to change everything. You saw how slow that was to actually change that. So now that you have that, this is where I stop. This is where, this is all I need. I mean, I don't need to take this to another program. This is when I take out a handy piece of pen and paper, uh, pen and paper and write this stuff down. So I know that's, that's your song. You, you have your song from here. You can, you know what your bass is, you know, it, you know. All you're needing to add now is melody and, you know, different elements of a song, but your core structure of your your song, the most important part is is there. So um, this is a powerful tool. I recommend everybody use this. I don't care how experienced you are. There are chords that you don't know about um, because you have a bias and uh, everybody does. And this is going to unlock that bias and, and show you a whole new chord structure, uh, a whole new plan. Um, so, yeah, you can write it down. Um, others will say, oh, yeah, there's a there's a I'm certain there's a, a way to, in you know, make it so that, you know, in your program, you could press this and, and change it in your keys. But honestly, I, I like writing it down and, and taking it to any dog of my choice and, and having the song, you know already down but again this is all you need thank you again for watching this tutorial this was a bit long but it was definitely needed to go over navicord which is an amazing uh program in itself and something that i use i use ev to you know since probably june or july of last year is when i ran into this um and completely stopped using loops for my uh for my basis of the song so uh, i do recommend this it will uh enhance your music it'll let you customize your music a lot more stop using loops but uh thank you again if you guys like the channel i am a ios producer i produce music on the go and i show you how to produce music on the go as well so you can go ahead and check this out thank you once again for uh checking me out please subscribe and uh have a great rest of your week